Hi there, my name is Vince Gaudiani. I'm a cardiac surgeon. I've been practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area for about the last 30 years. I've done about 10 or 12,000 open heart operations, and at the present time, nearly 90% of what I do has to do with valve replacement and thoracic aortic repairs. The rest is coronary bypass surgery. Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com. Very happy to be here with Dr. Vincent Gaudiani. Dr. Ghani, can you share with our community what attracted you to the field of cardiac surgery? Well, you know, the first decision you make in medical school is whether you want to take care of sick people or not, and I always did. And at the time I came up, cardiac surgery was a wonderful, brand new way to take care of the sickest people. And I fell in love with it then, and I'm still in love with it. Can you explain what AFib is? Yes. The heart normally beats by having the upper chamber squeeze and then the lower chambers. Upper chamber, lower chamber. But that squeeze is always preceded by the electrical activation of the atrium and then the electrical activation of the ventricle. It's intermittent because our heart rates are intermittent. Atrial fibrillation occurs when the electrical activation of the atrium becomes continuous. So rather than an intermittent squeeze, there's a continuous wiggling of the atrium that can have very serious consequences to how you uh, will live and how your heart will behave. What are the causes of AFib? Well, you know, atrial fibrillation is practically unknown in people who are in their 20s and 30s. Atrial fibrillation occurs more and more commonly as we get older. And it occurs more and more commonly as the atrium stretches. So in valvular conditions that make the atrium enlarge, atrial fibrillation becomes more common. And as we age, atrial fibrillation becomes more common. Dr. Gaudiani, can atrial fibrillation be harmful to patients? Yes. There are several bad things about atrial fibrillation. The first is that when the upper chamber quivers, it doesn't evacuate itself smoothly like it does when you have the regular rhythm. And therefore, since there's turbulent flow in the atrium, there can be places where the blood isn't moving at all, just like in a trout stream. Some places the water is moving fast, some places it's stagnant. And where it's stagnant, a clot can form, which can, of course, then later be released up to your brain and cause a stroke. So that's the first important thing. The second important thing is you lose the fine control of your heart rate. So normally your heart figures out just how much heart, uh, just how much blood to pump. But when you're in atrial fib, sometimes you go too fast and sometimes you go too slow. And the third thing is when you're in atrial fibrillation, you lose a little bit of horsepower, somewhere between two and 10% of horsepower, depending on your, on your heart. So you may have less capacity to do work and to move around. Are there any analogies that you can use that explain what atrial fibrillation is for the patients out there? One good analogy is that the upper chambers are quivering and the lower chambers are beating irregularly so that you may feel the effects of the irregular beat, which is called palpitations. And that's frequently the thing that'll bring you to patients to attention of physicians. Dr. Gaudi, what can we do to correct atrial fibrillation? Well, the first thing to say is that not everybody who has atrial fibrillation needs to be corrected. Uh, most patients who are in atrial fibrillation need to be on an anticoagulant medication to prevent the clots from forming in their atrium, which can lead to stroke, as we mentioned. But being on an anticoagulant medication can cause other difficulties. And in patients in whom those difficulties are likely or in whom they've occurred, for instance, bleeding into your intestine, those patients, we'd like to get them out of atrial fib if possible. And that can be done both by catheter-based procedures and by operation, by open heart surgery. So, Dr. Gaudiani, can you explain how these surgical techniques fix AFib? Yes. Um, they all are based on the same fundamental idea, and that is because electrical activity is randomly proceeding through the atrium rather than intermittently proceeding through the atrium, the procedures are designed to block the capacity of the atrium to have electricity pass through it. Think about it as the lines in an industrial parking lot where you go to buy groceries, for instance. If those lines disappeared, cars would start traveling randomly through the parking lot and it would be dangerous. And if you couldn't paint the lines right back on, what you might do is put up concrete abutments at various places strategically in the parking lot so that the flow of traffic would be more rational. And that's exactly what these procedures are designed to do. By either cutting the atrium with a knife and sewing it up, 
or by burning a, a little line on it with a catheter, a scar forms and the electricity can't jump over the scar just the way the cars can't jump over the concrete abutments so that you can help redirect and make more rational the flow of electricity through the heart. And in about, depending on the procedure, somewhere between 50 and 80 percent of the time we can return patients to normal rhythm. In the case of open heart surgery, usually associated with either a valve repair or a valve replacement. What's your number one piece of advice for someone who's been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation? So go to somebody you trust, someone you like, and have a nice long conversation, ask all the questions, and don't be afraid to take a recording device with you or to ask to have another meeting so that you really come to understand this. And if push comes to shove, go on to Adam's website and he'll direct you to somebody who knows what they're doing. <laughs>